Hello, in this video, we are going to go over the paper Vision GNN. And if you look at the abstract, they are saying that the widely used convolutional neural network and transformer treat an image as a grid or sequence structure, which is not flexible to capture irregular or complex objects. Instead, in this paper, we propose to present the image as a graph structure and introduce a new vision GNN architecture to extract graph level features for visual tasks. So basically, they are going to uh, go after um, CNNs and also transformers for vision applications. Let's see how they are doing that. So if you look at the paper um, in figure one, uh, we can see we have uh, one image. And uh, just like VIT, image is divided into smaller sections and we call them uh, patches. So for example, each one of these uh, patches uh, in VIT is one token, but here uh, each one of them is a node. For example, we have that here as a node. And now we want to see how that node is connected to the other nodes. So for example, to this node here, which comes, I believe, from here. And uh, let's look at the figure two, and that depicts the architecture. So we have our image as the input, and then we are going to create in the first step our graph. A graph that the nodes are those image patches. And this is our first step. And then in the second step, we have our network. And at the end, we have a head just for classification. Okay, let's first look at uh, how we are creating this uh, graph in the first step. So uh, for doing that, so in the paper, what they are saying is this. So they are saying that we have originally the uh, image as H uh, times W times three, which is number of channels. And then we are going to divide that to N patches, the patches we just saw. And then we consider each patch as one vector. So then we would end up having x1 to xn. So they are saying that these features can be viewed as a set of unordered nodes, which are denoted as uh, v1 to vn. So we have these nodes. And then, so we want to find the edges. And then for each node vi, we find its k nearest neighbors that they that helps us to find the edges so we are going to have k edges for each individual node or each individual patch for us and this is the way that we are going to create a graph so we know the nodes and now we know the edges based on nearest neighbors okay now let's look at the uh, second part which is our network so to get a better understanding of network it's easier just to look at the pseudo code provided at the end of the paper. Let's look at that. Okay, we have the pseudo code here. And if you just look at the uh, figure two, we saw that in our network, we have a graph processing section and feature transform sections. Okay, let's first look at this feature transform section. So in our code, that is this class that we could see here. So we have two layers and so we have FC1 and FC2. So for FC1, so we can see that we have a um, basically kernel size one in Conf2D, which means that we have a fully connected. And uh, then we have a batch norm and this is our activation function. And for the second uh, part, so for FC2, uh, we don't have a, um, Nonlinearity is just a linear layer, so it, it is also the kernel is one. And we also have the batch node two. Okay, so basically it's just a two layer fully connected neural network with the activation function GLU. So that is gonna be our FFN module. Okay, so we have this FFN module, and the second thing that we saw we have here is this graph processing. So let's look at this graph processing now. So for the graph processing, 
So that is this class called graph module that starts from here and it's going to continue to the next page. And uh, yeah, so we can see this one has a couple of uh, different uh, layers. So we have a FC1 uh, and we have a graph conv and then we have FC2. So let's look at what is FC1. So FC1 here is just um, depicted here. So we have a conv 2D, kernel size is one, and there is no uh, nonlinearity, it's just a linear. And also FC2 here, again, we have a, a conv 2D with kernel size one and no nonlinearity. So this is gonna be FC1, FC2. And now let's look at the graph conv. So for graph conv X, so we are gonna use this section. So, so that is this one. And we can see they use this function, dyn conv 2d, and then a batch norm, and then glue, okay? So this is all they have here. And uh, this dyn conv 2d is actually uh, at the beginning imported from this library. Okay, basically, if you want to summarize this uh, block here, so this one had FC1, FC2, and also it had that uh, uh, graph convolutional neural network. That FC1 was just a linear layer, and FC2 is also a linear layer, and uh, for this one, we are gonna use that function from that library, okay? That is basically uh, their structure for the network. Now let's look at the, some other details in the paper. Okay, another thing that we should uh, consider that uh, before section four, we can see uh, they talked about positional encoding and they said that they actually used relative positional encoding like swing transformer. That in swing transformer, uh, they showed that relative positional encoding is better than absolute positional encoding, like what is used in VIT. And here they also followed the same path and use the relative positional encoding. Okay. And in terms of the architecture, so they are uh, basically uh, having two type of architectures. One, one of them, uh, they call it isotropic architecture. So uh, it's not hierarchic, uh, it's like VIT. And the other one is a uh, pyramid architecture, just like a uh, swing transformer that you have different levels of uh, features. If you look at the pyramid architecture, we can see something like this. For example, for uh, VIG uh, TI, which is their smallest model. And uh, so they have four stage. This is actually very similar to swing transform if you're familiar with that. Uh, shrinking the size of feature map. So this is H uh, divided uh, by four times W divided by four, and then they're divided by eight, by 16, by 32. So image size is getting a smaller and a smaller and number of channels are increasing. For example, it was 48, 96. And for all of these different architectures in their pyramid uh, architectures, they always use K equals nine and K is the number of edges it's going to be connected from each node. Okay, so it's k equals nine, k equals nine, k equals one, and for all of the other architectures. Okay, let's also look at their results. For the results, they actually tested on uh, ImageNet and also on Coco. So let's look at their uh, results. They also actually, before we go to the results, uh, they have a very good uh, summary of their um, hyperparameters, number of epochs, um, optimizer, batch size, all of them are reported here. It, this paper actually is written very well and it's very clear uh, to read. And uh, let's look at the result of the pyramid for uh, comparison on ImageNet. And you can see uh, here they are comparing to CNN models uh, that our CNN models are depicted uh, in blue and they're also comparing with MLP models 
depicted in orange here and also with transformers depicted in green here so for example for one of the transformer we can see for swing for example b so uh, the size of the uh, image is similar as uh, pyramid v vigb and you can see the number of parameters for swing b is 88 for um, pyramid vigb is 92 million and number of floating point operations is 15.4 uh, for swing b and for uh, pyramid uh, vigb is 16.8 so it's just a little slower and also a little uh, higher number of parameters and if you look at the results we can see uh, for the top one we got better results a slightly better results 0.2 and for top five it's actually exact same so at least for this specific comparison that is not that much difference between them so just for top one there is a very slightly uh, improvement but this becomes more significant when we go for uh, object detection let's look at the results for object detection okay for object detection they are testing on a uh, coco data set and we have retina net here and also mask rcnn for different backbones uh, for example for the uh, swing transformer t let's compare that to our pyramid vigs so we can see that for vig we have a little uh, lower number of parameters a little better floating point operations and we can see we have improvement in map for 50 for 75 percent for a small and for medium but not for large objects for large objects the still swing t is better so it's interesting that uh, it seems that for small objects we are doing significantly better so that from 25 we got to 28 with lower number of parameters and with a faster network which is very interesting okay let's look at this result here which is interesting uh, because one patch from the top left corner is now connected to this patch and this is the result of uh, removing the sparsity of the connection constraint that we have in our CNN models. So in our traditional CNN models, we have something called a sparsity of connections, which basically means that uh, networks tries to emphasize on pixels that are close to each other and the emphasize on the pixels that are not close to each other. So for example, here, uh, if I have a kernel moving on this image, so the pixels inside this kernel are getting relationship to each other, but not to the pixels that are related to this kernel. This constraint now in uh, VIG, this is removed. So we don't have that. And that is the reason that one uh, patch from top left corner now could have a relationship to a patch to the uh, downside and that is probably the reason behind a uh, success of that over CNNs. Overall we could say that this paper is very important because they uh, introduced a new vision architecture which is based on graph instead of CNNs or uh, transformers and they actually showed that they could get a better result especially for object detection of small objects and um, just like uh, transformers that they got rid of the constraints of uh, sparsity of connections in CNN and uh, we can see that patches from different location of the image could be related to each other but it seems that there is a still a limitation of computation that uh, we can't still have each individual pixel of the image as one um, node of the graph instead we have to consider a patch and when we do the patch like VAT so we know that uh, there might be some small details inside the patch that might be missed and but if we try to get a smaller patches so we end up having more nodes and it becomes computationally expensive probably in near future 
we would see more advanced version of this approach. Um, overall, uh, this was a very good paper. And again, uh, thank you so much for watching this video.